Hello, welcome to Local Anesthetic Podcast, your regular injection of strange, weird, banal, sinister, any adjective you can think of really, news from around the world and of course locally because that's how we started. This is episode 407 now, well into the 400s now Rob, how you doing there mate? Hello mate, uh, fine, yeah, I'm a support. Um, right. It's um, despite being autumn, doesn't really feel like autumn. Mine, I, I, I don't mind. Uh, although I'm, I'm the old. Is it, I, th- I don't think it is autumn yet, Rob. I think it's still technically summer. We're recording this actually on the eighth of September as we speak, and I think that's still technically summer, Rob. I think you're you're wrong, Alex. Um, September, October, November are traditionally um, the autumn months. Um, we have Hang discussed on, this on the podcast introduce- before, but. Uh, no, no, I don't think we have. Okay, <laughs> I, I also don't get the news. I, I, I believe traditionally the the, the summer months are June, July, and August. Then, or uh, you know, autumn are September, October, November. Winter, December, January, February. Well, well, technically, the autumn starts Rob at the autumn equinox, which is this year on the twenty third of September. Right. Okay, well, fuck okay. you. Okay. Well, I don't. Do you know what, Alex? I don't believe in the pagans. Not, not, not just paganism, I just don't believe in pagans. Full stop. Can I just say, okay, can the I also just can go say, fuck as, uh, right, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, contrary to sort of popular opinion amongst our listeners that, you know, Rob and I um, really only do this podcast, you know, through gritted teeth and have no kind of relationship with each other outside of that. We, we did see each other yesterday, Rob, in person, not to do a podcast. Yeah, it was uh, very nice. It was nice to see you. Yeah, yeah. Although I don't appreciate you just turning up in my office, Alex. Um, you know, if you could just let me know in advance in the future, that would be. Uh, no, I'm only joking. Uh, yeah, it was lovely to see you, mate. And uh, it, it, I, I was trying to think of the last time I saw you, and that was obviously when you very kindly helped us move. But it was really nice to go and have lunch together. Um, as we've already said in the podcast, uh, Alex has never been to a Five Guys. Um, extraordinary you know because he lives in london and there are multiple and i love burgers um, and yeah because burgers. somebody i told you i was put off i was put off and but no i was it was it was it was wrong to have been put off and it was it was very good i was very impressed would you care to give it a score out of 10 oh definitely a 10 but uh the jalapeno peppers that i put in there were probably a bit of a mistake i found out this morning but uh, right that's fine. okay i i would I'd, i would actually say it was lower than the 10 just because I, there was far too much salt on the chips for me. I, 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 oh yeah, that's true. But that, yeah. But we, okay, that. But next time we will say can minimal salt on the chips. Yeah. Um. And then obviously next time we're going to Wimpy. Although I don't believe there is a Wimpy in Central London, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> I, mean, I could be wrong. Not that I've seen. Um. No. But yeah, no. It was lovely to see. I'm also. Uh, then obviously you got home and very kindly let me know that your your birthday card had arrived and uh, it had taken three weeks to get to you. Which is yes, yeah. Well, that's what that, I mean. Brilliant. It was thank you. Yeah, and that just shows the efficiency, Rob, and speed of Royal Mail. So um, thank you, Royal Mail. Look, Rob, it got here in the end. That's what matters. Yeah, exactly, Alex. Yeah, that that that's what I'm paying. I'm paying for. You know, as I said, I thought you, I'd just keep it for next year, and then you just don't have to bother. Right. Well, that that is now officially on on the record. Uh, so I it just is. to make it absolutely clear, I won't be doing anything else. Yes, for your next birthday. I mean, after that. Um, also, Alex, just to update you very quickly, apparently there is there is a wimpy in Shadwell. Um, again, a bit of a way out, but the, that's that's the closest wimpy to central London. Okay, thanks, Rob. Um, can I crack on with the podcast? Lots to cover, as always. Uh, sure, yeah, absolutely. Now, Rob, this this is a story that may affect you because you have a young daughter. I don't know if she if I don't know what kind of things you're feeding her. To be honest, I haven't really asked, but I assume that she. I don't know if she's allowed to have any snacks. Um, of course, is she, she is. a fan of um, the? Is she a fan of of Paw Patrol, Rob? The program. Um, I mean, she's never really sort of seen it. Although we have we have um, the, the, the 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 children's channels on yes, Sky. Y- yes or no will do, Rob. Well, uh, she she has. I wouldn't say she's a fan. She's seen an episode or two. That's about it. Well, well Rob, you want to listen up then? Okay. Right. This is by Carly Page and Zach Wicketer from TechCrunch.com from their security section. Okay. Little Rob recalls Little recalls poor patrol snacks after website on packaging displayed porn. <laughs> and nobody wants that, Rob. After website on packaging. Okay. Right. Great. That doesn't hang on. That doesn't really feel like the fault of whoever made these snacks. That just feels like someone's hacked their website. Supermarket giant Little has issued a recall of poor patrol snacks after the website listed on the 
product's packaging began displaying explicit content unsuitable for children, Rob. Right. Lidl, which operates more than 12,000 stores globally, is urging shoppers in the UK to return the snacks for a full refund. Affected products, Rob, include Paw Patrol Yummy Bakes and Paw Patrol Mini Biscotti. I mean, to be fair, it's probably not Lara's eating these, probably you. (laughs) Snacks recommended for children aged two and above. Probably what you have in your packed lunch, Rob. Lidl's recall notice. I've got a PDF. I'm not going to open it. Uh, Dated August the 22nd warns that the product's packaging contains a web address that has been compromised to display content not suitable for child consumption. Um, and we recommend that customers refrain from viewing the URL. I imagine there's a lot of people going out there now just to get these poor patrol <laughs> things and find what was on this URL. Uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, we do enjoy um, casting aspersions. I mean, maybe, maybe the company were experiencing, experiencing poor sales and then decided to redirect their website to something else in order to try and boost, yeah, as you say, and try to, uh, to cause a controversy and then, and then boost their sales. The desk- I'm not saying that happened. I'm just saying, you know, it could happen. The desktop website, Rob, that it linked to, which was actually meant an authentic website originally, but had lapsed. And when a website lapses, it was like taken over by somebody else and had numerous ads containing animated, explicit, and pornographic images. Uh, can I just say animated, explicit, and pornographic images is a good episode title. I don't know if it will pass mustard on, the, on these various app stores. Mm. Um, but uh, the website that it linked to was called appykidsco.com, which, to be honest... You know, I mean, that sounds, that sounds like, like, like a honey trap. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah, I would have chosen a different website there. Right, anyway, let's move on. Rob, every once in a while... We we keep talking about it that if we did have a database of um of of, of you know outlining all the episodes we've ever created with yep. tags yep on this kind of theme the sort of clown based story seagull based story um uh beavers yeah, UFO Paris, based story I think we suggested the other, the Paris, weeks back. Yeah. big cats yeah whatever the story is air, air, airline travel we have a lot of those yeah, we one do way or another. yep. Um, there would also be a rat section, Rob. And each time we featured a rat story, it's been uh, the perfect opportunity for you to showcase your excellent, excellent, excellent Roland Rat impersonation. So I want you to wait for a suitable moment in this story before you do your Roland Rat. And you can choose to do it whenever you want, Rob. But the listeners always enjoy it. I always enjoy it. So whenever you deem appropriate. Okay, no problem at all. I mean, this does mean that that guy who contacted us from the uh, from the pest <laughs> extermination company might get in contact again. You know, he's been trawling through our back catalogue and realised that there's a recent episode with mentions of rats and they will offer his services. I still think we should get him on, just for a laugh. Yeah, did you ever hear from him again? I never replied to his email, Alex. Um, uh, but I can do. I, 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 um, I just felt that if he hadn't bothered to really listen to the episode, then why should I bother giving him a response? Sorry, I've just seen a... I'm on Business Insider India, which, uh, which is where the story is from, and there's a sidebar with other stories and just a couple of, uh, well, just a headline that caught my interest. An increase in travel and hybrid work is making it harder to poop and now people are overusing laxatives as a result. What? Did you know, Rob, that the laxative aisle has become a barren wasteland as people fret over how soon their next bowel movement will come? According to the Wall Street Journal, demand is surging for laxatives and it's due to a combination of reasons, including an ageing American population, the fact that Americans don't consume enough fibre and... TikTok, TikTok is la- t- touting laxatives for weight loss. Anyway, let's, of course, the laxatives will lead to weight loss. If you shit everything out, you're going to lose weight. Well, yeah, that is, that is absolutely true. I mean, Alex, Alex we both work from home, and uh, I have to say there's been no significant change in my bar- bowel movements, and I'm sure the listeners will be, um, will be delighted to hear that. I don't know, Rob. I'd say, you know, just as a general observation, you're full of shit. Um, that, so that hurts, Alex. Laxatives that, that might hurts. be... Yeah, yeah. That sounded a bit more... <laughs> I mean, it sounded very confrontational, quite aggressive, actually. Um, yeah, it did, but it but it was said in the name of Jess, Rob. It, right. You know, okay. Wasn't, well, that wasn't the way it was taken. Okay. Well, I apologise, but that was how it was meant. Right. It's a comedy podcast, Rob. You got to you got to be prepared for a bit of cut and thrust there. Move on. Uh, <laughs> the story is by Alia Shoab by August the twenty seventh. Tourists are flocking to New York City to go on rat tours to see I- the iconic mascots of the metropolis, says report. So, Rob, do you want to go on a rat tour to New York City with me? When you say rat tour, we might other- find the we might find the turtles, Rob. Uh, true, yeah. Um, 
Do they live in New York? Yes. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was set in New York, wasn't it? The sewers. I think they're famous, like London, for having a lot of rats. You don't remember that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was set in New York? I just just always... I mean, Alex, it's been a long time since I think it was. I'm going to check that. Yeah, well, this is... I I just wonder whether it was just a generic city. Was it ever specifically said it was New York? I think you're probably right. I seem to remember there was a subway involved. Uh, Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, it was. New uh, New York City... uh, uh, Fans. Sorry, I thought that was my moment. <laughs> yes, their homes, it's the sewers of New York City. <laughs> uh, I'm a bit as well, I'll have to listen to that in the edit. You know, I do I, I, do, I do really enjoy it, Rob. Um, Maybe if you can cut yeah. it and then put it right at the end of the podcast, I think people enjoy that. Because also then, then what they can do is they can crop it or, or then, you know, what's the word? Edit? I don't know. But they could use it as a ringtone, maybe. Okay. Um, <laughs> <one thing. laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Maybe they don't want to do that. Fine. Tourists visiting New York City are going on rat tours to get an authentic Big Apple experience, according to a report by the New York Post. Kenny Bulwark leads free walking late night rat tours, taking routes near Rockefeller Center and in Flushing and Sunnyside, Queens. Rats are like a New York City mascot, Bulwark told the outlet. People want to see it for themselves. He also live streams on TikTok as he explores rat infested parts of the city with Rob up to 10,000 people tuning in at a time. Now, I don't know. We have many thousands of listeners. I don't know if we have over 10,000 listeners. So that's quite upsetting to think that a man wandering around sewers showing people rats gets more interest, Rob, than us. Um, Who also, and it makes me question our life decisions. Would we be so? Would we get more listeners if maybe if you bought a pet rat, had it on your shoulder during the podcast, or just did it, did my you know just did the entire episodes as rolling the rat? I don't, I, mean, I don't think I've got enough in the tank to do that. Um, I'd like to hear you say a sentence as rolling rat because I'm not sure you can say anything else apart from rat fans. So can well, you give, say give me a sentence to something? Say. Um, um. Listen up, kids. Don't take drugs. Listen up, kids. Don't... No, that's that's more like Yogi Bear. No, no. Please continue that to its conclusion. Do it again, Listen please. Listen up, sorry. kids. No, that, that is Yogi Bear. Um, Listen up, kids. Don't take drugs. That's that's not good. It's, no. quite, it's getting there. I've let myself down now, I'll be honest. I've also shit myself. Um... <laughs> What I was going to say is... It's those laxatives, mate. Yeah, I, I, I told you, Alex, I don't need them. Um, I, you know, I, I, take, I, I eat so much processed food, it just slides out. <laughs> what I was going to say is, what does a, I don't understand. Who is going on a rat tour? Who wants to go to New York to actively seek out rats? The only rat I can think of, of notable fame... this winter. Right. right. Do you remember there, there was a video of a rat on the subway carrying a slice of pizza down the stairs? <laughs> vaguely yeah yeah that's that's the only rat i can think of, of that was splinter <laughs> yeah taking it to the turtles because of course they ate pizza and i think that's what a lot of people made, made uh, yeah a lot of people made that joke there were a lot of strange ideas weren't there in uh the turtle i'm look as i say this i'm looking at a funko pop thing i have to do with teenage mutant ninja turtles which i really love what i was going to say was is that it was a strange idea wasn't it because first of all okay they're going to be these turtles, that well, they're men who've, who've, I don't know, touched some toxic ooze and whatever. I can't remember what it is. They mutated into sort of turtle men. No, they, and they're all going to have turtles. Italian. They started as turtles. It started as men as mutated that's turtles. It. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And they're going to live underground in the sewers with a rat who will be like a sort of guru. Who's their sensei. Yeah. Um, but they, yeah, yeah. And, but, and they, but they will have Italian names and therefore eat pizza. Yeah. Yeah, I, which is what Italians do. Well, I think what it was is because they lived in, maybe they lived, I don't know if there's like a, li- a little Italy connection there. So maybe that's where there that is, came from. Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously th- th- that makes sense with the, I mean, you haven't mentioned the fact that obviously you got re- um, Bebop, what was his name? Bebop and Rockstar said he was at the, the like the yeah, rhinoceros yeah, yeah. and the, the hippo or what the fuck I had the teenage the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game on the Game Boy when it came out and man I played that thing it had five levels it was absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant I loved it Um, just imagine these kids the kids these days they don't know they were born five levels that's all we had I still find it incredible I mean this was the era wasn't it I'm thinking about how censorious Britain was at that time 
you know, like we changed the name of a whole franchise. We insisted on changing the name over here to Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles because the word ninja was seen as too aggressive. Yeah. Now we wouldn't bat an eyelid at that, but that's quite incredible, Rob. No, Alice, I, again, I, I think it, it, it clearly indicates how far we've fallen as a, as a, as a nation. But uh, that's a conversation for another day. I just want to finish by saying when I was a kid and that original 90s cartoon, which I loved, I really did have a crush on April. Yeah, I think it was that, that yellow bodysuit. It was quite finger-hugging yeah. back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's give that a think later. <laughs> right. This guy who does these TikTok things, he's not the only one to capitalise on his fascination with the rodents. Luke Miller, the owner of Real New York Tours, also stops near Chinatown for tourists to see the creatures scurrying about. They're like new celebs in New York City with all the press they're getting, Miller told The Post. What? The, the outlet spoke to several rat tour customers, some of whom specifically came to the city to catch a glimpse of the rodents. It's one of those things you just have to see, Aaron Lidwell and his wife from Altoona, Pennsylvania, who visited the city hoping to see rats. Uh, Lidwell was so thrilled to see a few rat tails poking out a construction site that even reached down and gently pinched some, causing Bolwick's TikTok live stream to go nuts. One man, Patrick Norris of St. Louis, travelled to the city after becoming a fan of rat talk videos on TikTok. So there's a whole sort of trend drop of rat talk videos on TikTok. There's been many times over the last two years, especially, I don't know why it's been more prevalent, but I just felt completely out of touch with the rest of, of humanity. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, rats have long been an iconic fixture of the city, but their population surged during the pandemic. Reported rat sightings doubled in 2022, with city health inspectors documenting 60,000 instances of rodent activity compared to 30,000 the previous year. And early this year, New York City Mayor Eric Adams appointed a rat czar to help eliminate rats in the city, Rob. So, uh, there we go. Is that a new superhero, rat czar? <laughs> I, I have no idea, oh, God, uh, but possibly. Let me just finish, Rob, with a really good story from the Times of London. You're going to love this. This was from September the 7th by Kieran Gare. Headline, police call to mass killing find yogis in corpse pose. Right. So what- this, Rob, is a classic local anaesthetic story, and if I had the local version, it would even be better, but I just didn't have time to find it. Fine. Go on. Uh, you, you, okay. They were lying face up on the floor of a remote seaside observatory, garbed only in slick black outfits with arms outstretched and legs apart, their bodies motionless. Soon, a panicked call was made to the police. A ritual mass killing had occurred at the North Sea Observatory in Chapel St. Leonard's, Lincolnshire, police were told, prompting heavily armed officers to rush to the spot with sirens blazing. Great. Upon arrival, however, the police were met with looks of amusement the cafe was not the site of a massacre, but a yoga class run by Millie Laws, and they had been quietly meditating when it was mistaken for the scene of deadly violence. <laughs> but also, I mean, and someone just literally walk past and just assume that they've been slaughtered. You surely you'd see it take yeah. a few more minutes to try and just observe. Well, apparently, the scene. worried worried members of the public, numerous people, had raised the alarm after peering through the observatory's triangular window shortly before 9 p.m. on Wednesday. Laws of Unity Yoga said she was leading a class of seven, guiding them into a corpse pose. You couldn't make it up, Rob. The objective of the pose is to imitate a corpse by keeping the body still to achieve total relaxation. I'd set up a semicircle of candles and I was walking around with a drum. About halfway through, I saw some people come up to the glass and have a look in, but I didn't think anything of it. They did walk off very quickly, though. She believes the people who called the police had mistaken her loose-fitting yoga outfit for a robe like the type some cult leader might wear. The extent of the caller's fears were not made clear to laws until Thursday morning. According to workers at the Observatory Seaside Cafe, the emergency caller was concerned that the yoga instructor was involved in some kind of ritual mass killing in quotes, episode title. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I can confirm it was just a deeply relaxation meditation session, Law said. Nobody was harmed in the process. It's a genuine mistake. It's better to be safe than sorry. I do feel sorry for the people who genuinely thought something dark was going on, but obviously we've all taken it very lightheartedly. Um, the cafe, so basically, the cafe regularly hosts yoga classes, Rob, in the evenings. Um, they were quick to allay any fear, so they wrote on Facebook that the seaside village of almost 4,000 people did not need to worry that a, in quotes, mad cult was secretly operating <laughs> in its premises by night. Brilliant. Um, and they wrote some sort of, you know, mildly amusing um, Facebook post. I'm going to say, Rob, cover up. I think you're right, Alex. Um, I also have to admit that I, I, I... Now, don't just move on from it. Just stay with that before you go on to your next thought. Rob, this was an eyes wide shut type thing. These people were wearing robes. There was a ritual killing. 
mass killing. Police got there. And you know, the Brotherhood came together, Rob. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Say no more. Yep. And, uh, and this story was concocted. Uh, surely that's the most logical explanation. I, I think so. Sorry, but, what were you going to say? Rob? Well, I was going to say, actually, I, 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 I did tune out halfway through because I, I heard that there was potential pagan overtones and I just switched off. Fair enough. Okay, Rob, you got some stories for us there. Yeah, first is from BBC News. Uh, I know this this um, went quite viral, but it's a great story by uh, Max Mat- Matza. Matza, yeah, Max Matza. Um, the headline is Florida man arrested after trying to cross Atlantic in hamster wheel vessel. <laughs> did you hear about this? <laughs> Sorry, I, it's another Florida. No, I did not. Another Florida. If I had, I would be on my list of stories. This sounds. Brilliant. Rob. It is. I am. I'm. 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 My 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 appetite is whetted, Rob, for this story. So, a Florida man was arrested after trying to run to London across the Atlantic Ocean in a homemade vessel resembling a hamster wheel. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Stop. <laughs> yes. Sorry. This man thought that he could get in a large sort of wheel like a hamster uses. Yeah. And with the force of his own motion keep it on the, like, run, run and get it to spin and somehow get it to stay on top of the ocean surface. Yes. And by the way, even if he had been able to do that, which would have been incredible, and, you know, hats off to anybody who would manage to do that, how did he think he was going to get from there to the UK? I mean, because... It he was, was trying to cross the Atlantic, Alex, yeah. It, 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 was he not aware... It, but was he not aware of how long... I mean, it would take... It, it, we're talking he would die... Quite quickly from exhaustion. Y- yes, I th- yes, I think that's that's. Is he okay? Uh, is he is he not well? This person. Uh, well, there's no indication of that. Um, what do you mean? Hang on. No indi- He constructed a large <laughs> wheel and said he was going to cross the Atlantic Ocean by running like a hamster across well, the wheel. That's your indication. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he. he there's no indication there's any mental health issues uh, 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 apart from the hamster wheel. I just said what the indicate, yeah, <laughs> apart from the obvious. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so the US Coast Guard intercepted Reza Belushi about 70 miles off uh, Tybee Island in Georgia on the 26th of August. So Fish- he got 70 miles out? Yeah. How? So it worked for 70 miles, had it? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think maybe you need to see it. I mean, I actually think it's quite well constructed, oh, okay. personally. Okay, okay, okay. Give me the headline. I think if you just Google Actually, hamster, hamster wheel. wheel Atlantic, that'll come up. <laughs> Hope, it's oh, new- right. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that is impressive. Right, okay. I, I wanted to describe for this, so it isn't just some rudimentary. It's a very well-constructed thing. It looks like it's got loads of sort of buoys or balloons attached yeah. to each end. It kind of looks a bit like a dumbbell kind of shape, if you imagine, kind of. But the, the, the bit you would hold is very thick. and It's not really a very good description, is it? Um, go and look at it for yourself. So let's continue. So Don't be lazy. Um, officials said the 44-year-old marathon runner refused to leave the vessel for three days. Um, okay, to be fair, he's a marathon runner. Okay, I give that to him. Yeah, so still, he's, he's got the stamina that. potentially. Um, yeah, but, but, but it's a lot longer than a marathon to get from here to, new, to, 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 to Florida. <laughs> yes, true. Uh, Mr. Mil- uh, Mr. Belushi has tried three similar voyages before, all of which ended in coastal Coast Guard intervention. Um, the makeshift construction he was using is shaped as a wheel with paddles that are designed to propel it forward as the wheel rotates. Uh, based on the condition of the vessel, uh, which was a flow to a result of the, of the wiring and boys, officers determined Mr. Belushi had, was, was uh, conducting a manifestingly unsafe voyage. Uh, Can I just say, that's a good episode title. That is really strong. I I'm, love that. I'm not sure that manifesting, manifest, oh, a manifestly unsafe voyage. I mean, is it still a great episode yeah, title? Manif- Sorry, Rob, the episode title is a manifestly unsafe voyage, which is just a great name for a book, a film, a piece of art, anything. Like, I mean, that is just a lovely collection of words. Yeah. Um, now there's lots of things which I think we could describe as a manifestly unsafe voyage. Brexit. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, completely justified. Um, Mr. Malou- Mr. Belushi's voyage began as officials were preparing for the arrival of a major hurricane. Um, 
Official said he refused. Is to he stop. all right? So you would check the hang on. You check the weather before you set off. Now you've put in all this effort. Imagine he's like to his wife, and she's like, "There's going to be a hurricane tomorrow." He's like, "Yeah, but I've done it. I can't wait. Can't you just wait one more week? I've got to do this." Now, Alex, I, I, I do have to say this does escalate quite quite significantly. Now, um, official said he refused to step off the vessel and threatened to kill himself. He also claimed he had a bomb on board, according to court papers. Um, Sorry. So when you said no indication of mental health difficulties, yes. Uh, what I meant was, you know, that he... I said Robin from sort of training, right. I think. Yeah. Um, officials are later determined that the bomb had been a fake. So, you know, that's something. Um, he is now facing federal uh, charges. Sorry, what part of him thought, I'm going to take a fake bomb on board? I'll take a fake... In case they stop me, I'll threaten them with this fake bomb. And also, why didn't he just take a real bomb? I'm not advocating it, I'm just saying. Uh, well, I think, I, think, I think the idea behind the fake bomb is that if he... For that exact reason, if he was stopped, then he he would say, "I've got a bomb on board," uh, and so officials may say, "Oh, okay, we won't try and stop you or whatever." But this, let's just stop. Sometimes these room, stories need room to breathe. Let's just properly digest this and consider what's happening here. I can sort of understand somebody who wants to sort of be in some sort of independent explorer, right? Yep. I don't know, launching themselves into space. God knows what. But he can get to the UK via many very different means, right? He doesn't need to do this. Yeah. But this determination to say that, come what may, he's already tried it twice, I'm going to do it again, they're not going to stop me this time. To what end? Well, Alex, there, there are, there, there's a bit of a twist in this story. Nobody's going to be using this mode of transport en masse. It's not going to help anybody. It's not like he's invented something useful. Uh, no, that, that's a good point. Um, so in 2021, he was arrested after being rescued or trying to ride from Florida to New York uh, after 30 miles of drift. At Sophie's departure point, and in 2014 he had to be rescued from a similar construction near St. Augustine, and then two years later again he had to be rescued off the coast of Jupiter near Palm Beach in Florida. However, oh, right. okay, not that Jupiter, not that Jupiter. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> um, according to previous interviews, Mr. Belushi said he was attempting the voyage to raise money for a variety of causes, including the homeless and the Coast Guard, which is slightly ironic. Um, and Mike, this is a direct quote. I don't believe him. <laughs> Uh, my goal is not only to raise money for homeless people, raise money for the Coast Guard, raise money for the police department, raise money for the fire department. They are all in public service. They do it for safety and they help other people. End of story. So Alex, okay. he was doing all this to raise money. He's a, but he's a danger to himself, Rob, and he's <laughs> wasting valuable resources. Yeah, I mean, I, the fact that most of these are these, you know, the the the, um, the service he mentioned had to be, you know, had to be put into use to to stop him doing these things it says quite a lot, an awful lot. Um, and also the fake bomb, I think really sort of undermines his cause. Um, I'm on to a similar story now from Associated Press um, from the 7th of September by Lisa. Sorry, did you say it was a similar story? Uh, well, I can't think of many stories that could be similar to this, but all right. <laughs> but, well, to an extent, I suppose. Um, it's by Lisa Rathke, Um And the headline is... A robbery suspect who eluded capture in a vehicle on a boat and a sailboat arrested, please say. <laughs> okay, they say, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. I see what um, you mean. Okay. All so, right. a Vermont armed robbery suspect who police say evaded capture in the past week in a vehicle on a stolen bike on foot and in a stolen sailboat was arrested Tuesday after he was spotted in a kayak on a river. So, did he think he was in Grand Theft Auto? <laughs> that's what it sounds like. So, Doesn't it? Is that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so Eric Edson, 52, was wanted on, on accusations of robbery of a stall in Burlington in August tw- on August 24th, impeding and, assist- and assaulting two police officers and the theft of a servo and vehicles, police have said. <laughs> because of the unusualness of Mr. F- Mr. Edson's various flights of, uh, sorry, various modes of flight, from cars to bikes to paddle boards to sailboats to tractors, it's easy to lose sight of the fact that Mr. Edson is a dangerous person. <laughs> what a quote that is. <laughs> <laughs> that is a classic. That is a classic. Also, tractors. I wasn't. Where, where, they haven't mentioned tractors before. No, well, that's what I mean. He was just on a spree, Rob. Yeah, I do like a good spree. Not to do it personally, but no, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, so on August thirtieth, Burns police responded to a man passed out in a running vehicle that matched the description of one used in a robbery with before. They said when I was, when officers roused him, he fled at a high rate of speed, assaulting both officers with the vehicle. That evening, he fed police on foot and then on a stolen bike. He was just bike. asleep. He yeah, was just he was asleep. asleep in the car. Right. Yeah, and they had to wake him up and then he sped off. Um, 
That evening, he fled police on foot and then on a stolen bike before stealing a sailboat on Lake Champlain. Um, Edison was intercepted by the Coast Guard, but after the sailboat... After the sailboat rain... Oh, sorry, there's, an, uh, there's a misspelling. But after the sailboat run aground at the, at the base of the late shift cliffs, he fled, authorities have said. Um, <laughs> uh, Vermont State Police received a tip on Thursday. They were spotted in a kayak on the Lamiola River in, in Georgia, Vermont, about 21 miles away from Burlington. Uh, Edson landed the canoe, ran away, and then jumped into the, into the river and swam to the southern shore where he was arrested by troopers and game wardens, police Sorry. said. Or I, I just keep, I don't play it anymore, but I just keep seeing, yeah, Grand Theft Auto in my head. I mean, that is exactly, it was just a description of that. Uh, yeah, basically, it? yeah. Like, yeah it's but just also, thing how did he, he's quite skilled to be able to, to, um, uh, to you know, uh, to steal these vehicles because, you know, well, what did he hotwire them? What? I mean, well, on, on one day he stole a bike, a sailboat, uh, a kayak, uh, oh, a, a tractor car. apparently was yeah, mentioned. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know where the tractor comes into it. Um, but yeah, he has been. Unfortunately, he has been uh, apprehended. So okay, well, um, then um, that that's the way Grand Theft Auto always ends, Rob. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, the police always get you in the end. Okay, Rob, before we get uh, to our listener story of the week, this is from WBTV.com, which seems to be celebrating celebrating 75 years, or we're not quite there yet. Right. Right. Um, it's by their new staff from September the 4th. A great story. Atlanta flight forced to... I said, didn't I? We have a lot of airline-related stories. Here's one for you, Rob. Atlanta flight forced to come back after flyer has diarrhea all the way through plane, pilot says. I mean that is that is so grim. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Was it was it the airline food that caused uh, it? Or we'll get into that. It is something that most flyers probably believe would be unimaginable, but a Delta flight from Atlanta had to turn around Friday night after a person on board soiled themselves. <laughs> Delta confirmed that flight DL one nine four from Atlanta to Barcelona had to turn back because a passenger on board was having a, in quotes, medical issue. The flight was about two hours out when Business Insider reported that it had to turn back. In an audio transmission from the flight deck posted on Twitter, which they've called X, by an aviation enthusiast, the pilot said, this is a biohazard issue. We've had a passenger who's had diarrhoea all the way through the airplane, so they want us to come back to Atlanta. I mean, that's (laughs) extraordinary. I mean... The only thing, Alex, I think we have to take a moment to speculate what's actually happened here. Yeah. Now, I'm imagining this person really couldn't contain their bowels. And so mm. it, and it, it's, Maybe they were taking those laxatives we were hearing about earlier, Rob. Possibly, you know? possibly. And I imagine what, whatever happened, there was, it was explosive. So all I can imagine is they've... Flex of shit over other passengers. They've started in the, the seat. Peanuts. Yeah, absolutely. Got up, ran to the toilets, maybe at the front of the plane, and got to that that horrible situation with that toilet's how, locked. Okay, so but it's, how's it getting? The, how, yeah, hang on, how's it hang getting on. through the clothes, Rob? Okay, Alex, we don't know. Look, where 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 is the flight? Where is it from and to? Where Atlanta to? I think it was Atlanta to Barcelona. Yeah. Two very notoriously hot places at this time of year, I'd imagine. I don't know. Barcelona, I do. And Lanta, I imagine, would also be quite warm. So there's a good chance this person may have been in shorts. Okay? They've gone to the toilets at the front. Both of both the, the toilets are occupied. They've panicked. They ran. Ran through the cabin. You know, all, all the way spraying shit as they went. Just like, like a crop duster. To the, you know, to the toilets at the back. Maybe it made it there, but at that point, the damage is already done, Alex. That's what's happened. That's exactly what's happened here. You're also never going to really recover from the humiliation of it, are you? It's going to haunt you. No, I mean, this is this. If it's you Atlanta. Know, that image of looking up and seeing flecks of your shit over somebody's face. I mean, let's, um, let's think about this logically. This is, this is a long haul flight as well. If, they, if it's going from Atlanta, Georgia to Barcelona, we're talking at least eight hours. Longer, probably, yeah. And. So we're talking a relatively large plane, probably you know a few hundred people. 
that have witnessed you do not witnessed you know not not only just the just the actual sight but also the smell potentially the taste um you know there's obviously gonna be a miasma <laughs> in the cabin um what's a miasma uh well it's like it's that that uh, a miasma is like that that combination of um uh when a smell sort of permeates into into the air if that makes sense i've never heard that word before rob yeah, yeah. Mm. um you know it's the you know, the, people say you can often get your lunch out of it. I mean, that's exactly what you get, you know, in this situation. Um, so yeah, that, that, that poor passenger and the fact then you've also, you know, to add to your, to your shame and embarrassment. The plane has to turn back. Yeah, the plane has to turn back. So you've just inconvenienced the entire plane load of people and you've also shit yourself in front of them. And everybody has to be evacuated and the whole plane has to be cleaned from top to bottom. Yeah. The flight was, en- was delayed, Rob, by eight hours before taking off again. Yeah, I think you have to. And there's an image, Rob. Of there's an image of you remember that partridge where the farmers throw the cow off the bridge. Yeah, and that image of him as he tries to finish the advertisement and is then carried away on what are the a gurney? No gurney. Yeah. So the only image here is of the person post having shit themselves. They're un- they look they're like they're unconscious. They're in a neck brace and they're being carried off a plane on a gurney. I mean, Rob. also, do, are we speculating? There's a video. Hang on, mate. There's a video. Let me just see it. It's on Twitter. Hang on. Let me just see it. Are we not meant to call it Twitter anymore? Is that right? We're meant to call it X. Yeah, that absolute asshole. Is, 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 he's, re- he's rebranded it, Alex, although everyone I know still refers I to it as Twitter because X is just a, yeah. an incredibly stupid name. Oh, I've got some things on Twitter. Both wife and I were on the flight. It was a mess. The pilots made the right decision to turn around. The ground crew ripped out the carpet and put new carpet oh, in. Oh, my Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, my partner and I was on that flight. It was pretty bad. It oh, it dribbled all the way down the aisle and smelled horrible. The vanilla scented disinfectant used on it only made it smell like vanilla shit. After the plane landed, it was thoroughly clean. They didn't leave until around 2.30 a.m. Oh, God. Um, I'm assuming the person didn't get back on the flight. The smell, the smell was not human. Uh, I'm, would you want to get back up? Oh, imagine hi everybody I'm feeling bad now thanks for the sorry <laughs> okay Rob it's time for our listener story of the week what do you got and who's it from so this week it's from Steve um, it is from the Eastern Daily Press um, the story is from the 22nd of August. Thank you, Steve. Um, by Adam Barker. Headline is new stiff key ferry bridge built in national trust row. I didn't understand it. I, I heard the words national trust, but I didn't understand any of the rest of it. I'm going to be honest. Okay. Well, stiff key is a place. Key. In, yeah, stiff. Stiff key is a place in Norfolk. And apparently, um, a new ferry bridge has been built. Right. And this is on the podcast because... <laughs> Alex, who does want to know about a bridge that's been made by fairies? Oh, fairies? Yeah. I thought you said a think? fairy. Oh, no. Yeah, fairies. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, hot, I'm, I'm hot, Rob, and my brain isn't working. A bridge built... What are you talking about? There's been a bridge built by fairies in Norfolk. Am I hallucinating today? Potentially, but not at the moment. Um, so the stiff key bridge fairies have struck once again with another new bridge appearing across the marches. Um... In March last year, the National Trust, who owns the land at Stiffkey, removed a wooden bridge over the marshes after deeming it to be structurally unsafe. Um, the charity was promised to replace the bridge, but after leaving locals without a safe way to cross the marsh for the last 18 months, a structure appeared with the identity of those behind the bridge remaining unknown. Um, however, the bridge was removed by so the National like those, Trust. It's like those crop, crop circles. Yeah, basically. And the National Trust should be right. being killjoys. Um, However, the bridge was removed by the National Trust earlier in the month uh, and, will, and was described by locals as an early morning raid. <laughs> the charity said the unauthorised bridge was both dangerous and unlicensed, sending out a warning that any future structures would also be removed. Now, a new bridge has appeared, with the mysterious bridge fairies seemingly sprinkling more magic over the troubled wa- waters in Stiffkey. Bridge fairies, Alex. Fairies are building bridges right. in Norfolk. Um, Ian um, Curtis, okay. uh, not of Joy Division. Uh, Ian Curtis. Wait, I was uh, supposed to say, fucking <laughs> hell, like, like, now I know I'm hallucinating. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Uh, so Ian Curtis, a life, lifelong Stiffkey resident and bridge campaigner, of course he is, um, said he was out this morning on a walk on August the 20th when he first saw the wonderful structure. With camera in hand, I rushed down there after the tide had gone out and realised the marsh ferries had not abandoned us after all. Um, Can I just say, Rob, fairies, fairies will build us a bridge again, <laughs> etc. Uh, it took me a while to realise what you were singing there, which is quite alarming. Um, the National Trust <laughs> said it would cost about... <laughs> that was uh, Love Will Tear Us Apart Again by Joy Division, everybody. Yeah, yeah, I got there um, in the end. Don't come after us for copyright. Yeah. Um, the National Trust said it would cost about £250,000 to replace the bridge it removed last year. That seems feels excessive. Um, apparently they've, they've committed to, to uh, £20,000 in fees and surveys to uh, do the, to the formal consultation. Um, I mean, it gets a bit dull after this, but I just wanted to say that obviously... Um, yeah, the, the the fairies are building bridges once again, which is a, a delight. Okay, Rob, well, that brings us to the end of episode uh, 407. I was just thinking with that plane-related story we had before, is there a... Is there a 407 flight? No, 747 is the same as 407, isn't it? Isn't it? Maybe when we get to episode 4... four Rob, when we get to episode... 747 we will feature only plane related stories that we've covered in the past seal 747 yes we are going to continue that long Rob okay Alex let's 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 put this on the record now neither of us will remember to do that oh no I think I will right I really do okay we'll get there and I'll say didn't I say oh oh Right, I didn't I'll be old, right? Didn't I say that we were meant to be doing something on episode four seven four seven? Will we be old? No, we won't. Uh, yeah, but see, how Alex, long? Fifteen look, years time. We we've been going twelve years. If you're if you're talking like that in what maybe ten years time, I'd be really concerned. <laughs> <laughs> we're at the end of the fucking episode, Rob. Come to visit us on lapodcast.net. You can download all of the episodes manually there if you want to, all of them. But the really important thing is is that there is a donate button there. Please donate to the worthy course that is this podcast because it really does help to keep us afloat. It could be a one-time donation, it could be a rolling donation, and for that you'll get, Rob will send you a private link to uh, 40 bonus episodes that aren't on the regular feed that we did for Patreon for a time. They're brilliant. They're called LA Podcasts and Extra Jab, as well as our Daft Talk episodes, which was a different podcast Rob and I did, which is uh, which isn't available online anymore. Um, the other thing I would say, I just want to make a petition, Rob. I was looking recently at our reviews, which are stunning. I mean, the, the reviews on, for example, Apple Podcasts, we get such fantastic reviews, and we I love reading them. I love what people say. We haven't had any now for a little while. The bulk of them were really in the first 10 years of us recording. There have been a smattering of some over the last few years. Mm. But I know people just don't want to go online and leave reviews for things, especially if they like something. They normally want to review something if they're pissed off. But if you really like this podcast, can you just take the time on your Apple's podcast app just to leave a review it takes two seconds or whatever you're listening it to on because it really does help raise our profile we'd really appreciate it. that's something small you can do for us and for you we will be back next week with episode 408 god bless and keep it local